Thanks for checking out Stoppage Time. We do this five days a week live, Monday to Friday, on our IG account for the first half podcast. We talk to boys and girls dealing with what we're all dealing with right now, a little bit of uncertainty and not being able to go out much in the world. We're going to show off some of our best football memorabilia and favorite jerseys. We're also going to talk about how we're keeping mentally sane, physically active and what we miss most from the outside world. There is no way I'm going to waste any more time. I got to know, you've got to explain a little bit about uh, the magic that's happening behind you. And obviously, could you show us something that means a lot to you? Absolutely. So I'll start off with this shirt behind me. I yeah. actually, you won't, you might just be able to make out that it's signed by the entire Chelsea team. It was yeah. signed a day that you and I shared together when we were lucky enough to go to the training ground yeah. and get really up and close and personal with all those players who had just won the championship. Yeah, um, brilliant. Mourinho was the coach. Mourinho was the coach. There was one player that didn't sign that was John Obi Mikel, but uh, we got every other squad member that was there, including Hazard and, and JT and Lampard. Costa. But Acosta was there looking a little overweight, but hey, you know. <laughs> um, and the rest of them are just, I mean, it's its a collection of shirts that I've had throughout the years and gotten framed. I mean, we have wow. the shirt that Chelsea won the Champions League wearing here. Yeah. Uh, this was the last shirt. That, this was the shirt that we wore the first season that we won the league under Jose Mourinho. Beautiful. And, and over here was a shirt from 1997, the year that we won the FA Cup. Wow, that's really – look at that one, huh? Woof. That's I, have, I have Dennis Wise on the back, and, I mean, I guess that one's probably my favorite because I, I was lucky enough to go to Wembley in 97 with my dad. Wow. Um, and see us win 2-0 against Middlesbrough. It was the old Wembley 2 with the two towers. Even more um, amazing, right? And on the way back, we were in the train on the way back, and, and I, I was eight. Um, oh. And I got put on someone's shoulders in the tube, and the entire – cart of the tube was pointing to me screaming when wise went up to lift the fa cup we were there it was just a really cool moment that i don't think i could i could have had if i was an adult it was all about this no, because person you were the kid yeah picking me up putting me on i wasn't even sitting down when we scored our first goal uh we were still making our way to our seats 42 seconds in bang dimateo top corner oh my gosh and i can see that you got a psg what is that a, a training top what is that behind you? no bro you're crazy training what are you talking it looks about like a training top bro like that's training... that's that's the one from 2002 that ronaldinho used to play with us for us okay. um we had a such a great no team sponsor. at that time well thompson yeah oh yeah okay then yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah you've seen thompson yeah. and what for me it was a uh, great memories because uh, Ronaldinho was was such a crazy player, and he, I mean, for his old career, don't get me wrong, but I mean, yeah, yeah. it was such a big thing to having him in uh, at, at the the French league, and and uh, he, he was just, he was brilliant. He was he was amazing. So uh, so that was a great memory for me because before that, PSG was kind of like so so, and I grew up with PSG when when I when I with my dad obviously and i was i was pretty young and we used to have a really good what team with, with david ginola and and some of the players like that um name it i mean we had a really good team back then and then we had a moment that it was kind of like ah, so so even with the coach and everything and then ronaldinho came and it was a game changer game changer yeah what a what an amazing player you, he's, he's, uh, he's basically my favorite player so is he oh yeah man oh, amazing yeah 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 that's cool. That's yeah. cool. That's not, is his name on the back on that jersey? Of course. Of course it is. Not. Not. Nah, no, 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 no. Nah. Because nah. it's on it's on the wall. I can I can say, yeah, of course, but no, it's not. Don't okay. ask me to show it because I, I'm not going to So we ask you, you want to show us off a little bit of memorabilia. So if you have something special, like a jersey that means a lot to you or, you know, some sort of piece of uh, football that's important to you yeah. that most people wouldn't know because they don't get this opportunity to get to the kind of a one-on-one -on -one, uh, visit for sure so i think Amazing. that like to start off i have over here i think the first one of the biggest things for me is like the the jersey i wore like for my first game a Amazing. professional game in montreal yeah Amazing. so this right here like obviously means a lot because it just kind of marks all the hard work and you know dedication that i put into this sport and to my city you know for all right. these years and having the chance to represent montreal as a local kid and keeping that jersey is very important for me so i yeah, think uh that right there stands up as number one i got a few other like scarves here about like uh trips to games that i've been to like here we have like a scarf when i went to my first 
Premier League game, like Manchester United against uh, Half Leicester and City. half the best, right? Yeah, so back in like 2014, uh, yeah. I think it was my dad that uh, took me there for my 18th birthday, and we got to spend like, uh, I think, a weekend there. We went to see uh, a game at Old Trafford. Amazing. And uh, finally, it would be, as I'm Greek as well, so when I was in Greece in yeah. 2004, right. Greece won the Euro. Oh and my, God. Uh, my family was, we were, we were in Greece, and it was just, crazy and what was happening crazy, after right? the scenes and we ended up getting uh you know just a, a, a scarf to remember the that the experience, experience but... have you ever experienced anything like that since mm, no i wouldn't think so again i was a bit younger obviously right. a lot younger i think i was yeah. what in 2004 that's 16 years ago so i was like eight years old around seven eight years old yeah. uh but i still remember it vividly i think that uh we were all around watching in like our little village uh, like uh projector screen and we were i think maybe three four hundred people watching and it was it was insane you have something you want to show us uh, that uh, means so, something to you well my mom and my sister took a trip to the netherlands um what maybe six years ago seven eight years ago now a while back and um i asked them to bring me back a dutch jersey um, and they, you know, they were there for, I don't know, maybe 10 days and they had a, they had a really wonderful trip. They, they saw like family and everything that lives out there still. And, but they weren't able to find the Jersey. So I got this zip up, but yeah. then right at the last minute when they're at the airport, they got this. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. That's so it. I don't know, I guess it's just know that some tourists aren't going to be able to find their jerseys anywhere except the airport, but this is the, the Euro Cup jersey from yeah, 2014, I think. Yeah. So it's the, my Dutch combination look, it's pretty good. Where did, uh, where did this, the love of the Dutch football team come from? I mean, um, well, from my grandfather, from the, my mother's side of the family, yeah. they're from the Netherlands. So uh, my grandfather emigrated here and uh, my mom and her like big family grew up just outside of Quebec City. Yeah. So I don't know, I think one of the great things about sports, especially for me, it's always just been a tie to my family and the and the heritage that I'm like a part of. So so that's where the love of the Dutch come from. Go ahead. Don't wipe your little hand. <laughs> Little, little Chelsea. I made sure to wear my it, Chelsea's. It's just gonna just be so like would... in your face, you know. Let's go. Let's let's see what I you mean, got. I, I know everybody knows I'm a big. Everybody knows I'm a big United fan, so there's not even a question. No, whatever. You see that? You see that? Oh, God. See that flag right there? That's whatever. Oh it's my God! This is like whatever. beautiful. It's all right. You know. It's all right. You it's look, all right. You look like a transformer. The, that logo in the front looks like a transformer. This is it. I know. Glory, it. glory, no, you said nice. we were gonna go, okay. so let's go. Okay, All right. let's go at it. I mean, <laughs> you see what we did to you guys, Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Yeah, okay. It wasn't our. It hasn't been our. Uh, whatever. Right now, if the league oh, ends oh, the way, oh, it left, right, right now. Wow. Yeah, right now, right now, uh -huh. right now. Okay, it's been yeah. the season as it stands. I'm okay if it stops right now, motherfucker. I'm good. Of, I'm good. <laughs> of course. Every Chelsea fan wants that. How are you keeping mentally sort of on it, considering your business is very public, you're very much out there, uh, you're constantly in meetings, you're constantly developing programs, like, you know, for for the industry and for your business. This must be just like, now what? <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. I mean, you know, personally, I had I had two film projects going that was slated to happen this year that at this point have just been completely obliterated. Um, yeah. But I mean, as, as I said, you, you do what you can and you move forward what you can move forward instead of wasting your time thinking about what you can't change. And, and that's it really. And Tommy, for your, your physical being, like what are you doing to keep sort of physically active and fit within this sort of, you know, confinement time? One of the great things for me is, is my dog. Um, you know, my dog is a great, a great source and, and, and reason to get up and at him. And, and, um, I can imagine that if not, I would be pretty much couch logged for most of the day, but, uh, having this little guy around gets me out, gets me active. Yeah. Uh, I can't sit on my butt for too long because he'll, he'll nag me pretty quickly if I do. 
Do you uh, do you find your is your dog like what the heck? Now I'm getting walked every goddamn ten minutes. Like, the first few days walking? he was like, "What is this, guys?" I mean, <laughs> I've been walked four times already today. I love it, but at one point, come on, my legs are only this big. I know uh, you know you are one of the few guys that I know too that is in in full blown. Haven't stopped with the uh, takeout and delivery and all of that, and so that's yeah. definitely been a hard juggle. Yeah. So first off. That's uh, jumping right into that. How how's all that going with you and all the restaurants that are? Well, doing man, uh, let me tell you, it's such a big challenge for us. Uh, it's been very intense. Uh, you know, we need to adjust ourselves. It's a, uh, like I said, a big, big challenge. Um, it's um, we have to be there every day. We have no choice, you know. So yeah. no no quarantine. Basically, we're trying to stay home as much as we can. Of course, um, I've been also delivering a lot of recipes on Instagram on my own account. To Super help cool. out some, yes, to help out some people and everything, but still, the, rest, the at least Fugazi Pizza is doing very well. The rest of the, our restaurants are closed. Uh, we we've been doing it with, as well with Barocco in New Montreal, for right. uh, so we started last week and uh, yeah. so we're doing it this week again. Uh, cool. Also, all all the classics from Barocco that we've been doing for the, the last 11 years are back on the menu for Uber Eats and also takeout. So if you call the and restaurant all, right it's away, all, it's all coming out of one place, or it's uh, you're uh, well, it in both restaurants. Barocco, it's at Barocco and Fugazi, it's at Fugazi. Yeah. So uh, Fugazi also is doing very very well on Uber Eats, so which amazing. is which is amazing. Yeah. So, but yeah, very challenging because we need to. Uh, it's 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 basically it's a new restaurant. I mean, uh, as much as it's a challenge at work, it's also a challenge at home. You have two kids, right? So. Um, But um, we try to keep it positive, you know, and we uh, a lot of FaceTiming with the family in, in France and my, my wife, her family lives in Quebec. So, uh, yeah. you know, we also what's cool, have, most of my friends are still in France. So what I do, yeah. we, we, we were like FaceTiming each other with a house party kind of application. And we, yeah. we just like drinking and talking. And it's it's a and kind of a, it's, it's also a kind of a good already, way. You were already doing that anyways, right? Like you guys were already hanging out in the distance anyways, right? Yeah, 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 but but I don't know because now because of that event, it seems that we're getting closer even more than uh, what it, what we was. So how have you been doing, dude? Like we're gonna jump right into it. Uh, you know, people know who you are. So how is um, how are things treating you? How are you dealing with this mentally? Uh, well, you know, I think at first it was a bit of a, a difficult situation to adapt to, right? Like it's it's a new norm that we need to get used to and a new routine that we need to get used to. But yeah. Uh, I think the most important is that uh, from my side that uh, you know I'm I'm healthy, my family's healthy, and everybody around me is uh, is a okay. So I think that's the first thing that we think about. In other words, and aside from that, you know, you just gotta keep doing what you gotta do to keep in shape, especially for a situation I guess where you don't know when we could possibly start training again or start playing. So you just gotta make sure you're you're ready whenever that so, uh, yes. uh, green light is. And so that sort of leads me. So mentally, obviously, you're probably doing you know exercises, you're reading stuff, and you know keeping yourself sharp. But so physically, you're doing the same thing, I guess. You you have a routine that you're practicing at home, and you're doing. I mean, you the best you can, right? Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, we all have uh, we have programs that we follow that's given to us by the club. And right. I think we're very fortunate that uh, the Montreal Impact, for example, they all gave us stationary bikes. So yeah. at least we have like some sort of equipment to work on. Yeah. Um, well, you don't have that, equipment at home otherwise. Come I on. mean, like I, I, I never had a bike. I had a few like from yeah, yeah. some dumbbells and stuff like that. But in terms yeah. of uh, cool. actually biking, and uh, yeah. I would never have thought that this would come about, right? So yeah. So how are you guys handling uh, the new change? Um. I think we're all doing pretty well for the, yeah. you know, as well as can be expected under the circumstances. Um, Gabby moved in with me for the time being, so that's been a really, yeah, there was a little while there where we weren't able to see one another, and that was really tough, so yeah. having her here has been a, a really great tonic and, you know, been a really good time. Yeah. Uh, Gislaine, Gislaine and I live together. He's doing all right. Yeah. Like, our other roommates, yeah, where everyone's doing good. Yeah, everybody's um, keeping positive spirits and keeping themselves occupied, yeah? Yeah, 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 definitely. We all have our projects, we all have things that we're, you know, finding to keep busy and entertain ourselves. And the, yeah. <laughs> the saddest thing was Jislaine's PS4 died a few days ago, so that was a... That was a sad night for him. What yeah. uh, are you guys doing anything uh, to keep active, like physically active, some stretches, little... Uh... What do you, what do you um, tell me you're doing more than video games? There's got to be some stuff. 
I've got my dog, my my yellow lab legend, yeah, which has also that been really great. Amazing. Yeah. Um. So she always keeps me busy, and you yeah. know, like makes sure that I get outside, get out of the house, get some exercise. Um, it's definitely like pretty regular video chats with my mom and dad back in New Hampshire, making sure they're doing all right. Um, chat with my sister on the phone and stuff. How has it been in this situation for you? I think I speak for everybody when I say it's a little bit, I don't want to use the word depressing, but you know, everybody feels down, you know, um, this is something that is going on. It's bigger than us. Let's, let's be honest. This is something right. way above, you know, anybody's pay grade or whatever. And, you know, we just pray that everything, you know, we find a vaccine or something like that, or everything just the care goes down and then life comes back. But uh, for me, like I said, it's all about Netflix. Um, I try to exercise as much as I can. Well, yeah, that's what I'm going to ask you. So the next thing is, are you doing a lot of exercise at home or outside? Yeah, Yeah. I literally run like every day, pretty much. Um, You know, a lot of push-ups, sit-ups, because you can't go to the gym, so you don't have any weights. Right. And I sort of like make my own weights. I kind of get a gallon, put some sand in, you know, get some weight a little oh, yeah. bit. And then, yeah, Amazing. just try as much as possible. You know, I do a lot of workout on online, stuff like that. So cool. Yeah. I've seen a lot of that. I've seen a lot of people actually doing that and sort of creating things at home that can work yeah. as weight. So that it, it's very smart. And mentally, how are you doing? Are you doing anything to sort of keep yourself in a positive mindset about what, you know, about what things are going to look like a little later? Like, how do you keep yourself positive? Yeah, I think the mental part is it's a little bit hard, you know. Think yeah. about it. You, you get up in the morning, you don't go anywhere, you stay home. Yeah. The next thing you know, you got to go back to bed. Yeah. Um, so I read a lot. Yeah. Uh, I watch a lot of Netflix. Netflix, are you watching anything special right now? Don't tell me the tiger crap. Are oh, my God. Like, uh, Come on. What is no, that? No, dude, like, I know. I'm, I'm just I'm, asking. I'm watching a couple. I, actually, I just finished Ozark, which is amazing. Crazy, you better, right? do, yeah. do you watch Ozark? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not up to date, but I know what it's about. So, oh yeah, my crazy. god, get out of here! <laughs> I mean, Ozark is amazing. I watch Money Heist. Good. Uh, yeah, you haven't you haven't seen it, dude? You, come on, man. You, I mean, you, all you got is time, bro. You, you gotta you gotta get on that, you know. If you like what you're seeing, check it out. Check out what we did last week, which is this mashup, and let us know what you think. If you want to get involved, DM us, text us, email us, get in touch. Maybe we can talk the following week as well. I hope you enjoy what you see and let us know. Welcome to Stoppage Time.